Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. And today we're going to continue and we're going to finish the second paper in this Grade 3 past papers from the year 2016. There are loads of resources available to help you in your studies. If you visit my website, if you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 to accompany each step of this series. Everything you need to know for this grade can be found within this document. Also on my website you'll find a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and if you want to re-access some information and do some revision on particular topics every section of the Music Theory and Practice Workbook for Grade 3 you can find tutorials to help you through each one of those topics. You can also access information about the books I have available. If you visit SharonBill.com it's all there. I've written How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam and it's full of hints and tips on how to best prepare for your exam and it's also full of exam technique tips to help you to make the best use of your time when you're sitting and taking your exam paper. So if you go to my website you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like that would be fab, that would be really encouraging to me and if you subscribe to my channel to keep updated there's loads more to come and so now if you grab your pencil make sure your pencil's sharp I use a mechanical pencil just to keep it nice and sharp. You need an eraser and a ruler. And we'll turn to the last question. So if you turn to page 9, and we'll look at this last question together. I hope that you've had a go of this yourself. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes. You'll, you'll learn by your mistakes. It's much better to learn that way. So I'm hoping you've tried this yourself. And now I'll go through these questions with you. So question A. Eight tells us that all of the questions below refer to this little extract here and so if we move to section A we've got some performance directions and some Italian musical terms now from 2018 onwards these are going to be presented to you in the form of multiple choice but we'll go ahead and write out the definitions for these just because it's good revision to do so so the meaning of Largo is slow, it's literally sort of slow and stately. Espressivo means expressive, it's not difficult to guess that I don't think. The 2 in the time signature, 2 over 4, remember the top number deals with how many beats per bar, the bottom number deals with what sort of beat, so the 2 literally means 2 beats per bar. It's the bottom number four that tells us we're dealing in crotchet beats or quarter notes. P, P is short for piano, but that hasn't explained what it means yet. We need to say that it means quietly or softly. And this sign here that's like a hairpin sort of opening out, it's the sign for crescendo, spelt crescendo, and it literally means gradually getting louder. It's important that you remember the gradually getting loud, it's gradually opening out. Gradually getting louder, there we go. And let's move on to section B. So again we're referring to the top extract of music. It says give the letter name of the highest note in the melody. So we need to refer to this melody. We're in the bass clef and we need to look, there's lots of ledger lines here and here. And this one, in both cases, is the highest. And so we need to work out. We know that it's good boys deserve football always. A, B, C. There's our middle C. C, D, E, F, G. So that's note G. We've got a key signature of B flats and E flats. That doesn't affect this. So we can just write note G. The melody is in the key of G minor. Which other key signature has the same key signature? And so G minor is related to the key of B flat major, which also has two flats of B flats and E flats. Okay, next one. 
Give the time name, so whether you say crotchet, quaver or quarter note, eighth note, just stick to your definition terms, you only need one of these. We need to explain the shortest note in the melody, so if we just glance ahead, so whilst there's lots of these semiquavers or sixteenth notes, if you just keep glancing ahead you'll see that this one is the shortest, and this is a demi semiquaver. So you could either call it a demi semiquaver or if you use the um, American or pop terms, a semiquaver is a 16 and so this will be 30 second or th note. There we go. Next question, name the degree of the scale, so we're counting the steps of the scale of the last note of the melody we need to name. Remember that the key is G minor, so G is the first degree of the scale. And so we need to name the interval or the degree of the scale of this last one. So here we have a G, all cows eat grass. G is one, A, B, C, line space. So space is one, two is the line, three, four. We're on a four, G, A, B, C. Fourth. You've just always got to be count, careful to count G as one. Let's look at the next one. There are three pairs of tied notes in this melody. Is this true or is this false? And so we've got to decipher between which are slurs, which is an umbrella over lots of different pitch of notes, meaning play them smoothly together, and a tie is next door note head to next door note head of the same pitch adding those time values together. So we've got one tie here, that's not a tie, that's not a tie, that's a slur, they're not the same note. That's a tie, so that's two, that isn't, that isn't. We've only got two. The question says there are three pairs of tie notes in the melody, that's false. There we go. Okay, so this next question, using the blank stave above, so they conveniently place the stave here so we can easily refer to the extract, we need to write out the melody from the beginning of bar 1 to the end of bar 4, but we've got to use notes of twice the value, so we've got to put in a new time signature, and with then we've got to beam the notes correctly to be in line with this new time signature. So let's look at what we've got to do. At the moment, we're in 2 over 4, which is 2 crotchet beats or 2 quarter notes. We need to stay in 2. We've always got to stay in duple time, but to double, we go from crotchets or quarter notes to minims or half notes. So that will be our new time signature. So instead of 2 over 4, it'll be 2 over 2 because it's 2 half notes. You don't change the top number, we need to stay in duple time we change the bottom number. So we're going from bar 1 to the end of bar 4 and so I'm going to just pop my bar lines in alignment with theirs. 1, 2, that's a long bar, 3, 4. Don't forget the last bar line, don't throw marks away just for that little bit. And so now we're doubling everything. So here we've got a D, that was a minim or a half note, so double that will become a semi brief or a whole note. It's tied. Now these are semi quavers, and so they're going to become quavers or eighth notes. So, I think I've gone a bit floating a bit high up there. There we go, just tidy that up. So just copy the note heads out for the moment. And so we're still going to be grouping them in groups of four. Just show that that goes up a little bit overall. But as these are going to just become quavers or half notes, we just don't need to add the line because we an extra line. We've now doubled the value and that shows we've grouped them in half beats, in half notes or minim beats. So again 
that's generally going down back so I'll show you that with the beam but we only need to add one beam because we doubled the note value and now they are they're correctly grouped so here that's a one beat when we're counting in crotchet beats or quarter notes so this is a one beat we doubled to show the unit value of a minimum or a half note that's that done and so it's the same principle again but this time we need to add a dot and then here we've got the D to the D at the moment that's um, quarter notes uh, um, quarter of a beat or sixteenth notes they're semiquavers just like that and so we just need one beam overall and then instead of having three, we have two here to show that's now a semi-quaver. And there we go, that's that. However, we haven't quite finished yet. We need to now, we've done all the thinking, but I would just go the extra mile and add the details. Do everything you can to earn those 10 marks. And that's the end of the question, and that's also the end of the paper. I do hope that's been helpful to you. If you can give me a like, that'd be really fab, that'd be encouraging to me. And subscribe to my channel to keep updated, there's loads more to come. I'm really enjoying working through this series with you. And please do go to SharonBill.com, there's lots of information there, so make sure that you access that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!